this early in a long time. I started thinking, man. Either they don't know, don't show, or don't care about what's going on in the hood.
still streaming, you know, ground zero to all the way to the full final product. Go the full lowdown of the whole entire David, process David, and. Screen demo right here, do visions. About to go through all the fundamental process of silk screen from you know the screens and the mesh one, the EQs and the squeegee down to the material shirt and different you know mediums you want to pair on top of. And you know, just get the full lowdown of the whole entire silk screen process. Yeah, check one, two, one, two. We have your palette right here. We have your screen. We have your four color turn press. One station, your flash dryer. We got the camera set up. We got the people ready for the demo. Station, got the camera, got the flash dryer heated up, got the ink and materials ready on the side, ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
What do you go for, for Cal Poly for? Uh, graphic design. Graphic design? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I was out there like probably like two weeks ago. I was doing like a live like silk screen thing oh, yeah. for like the like Bronco Spear Week or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah. uh, like I, I came across like I guess uh, one of the members from the ASI at uh, the Pomona Art Walk, and like she she basically told me like you know could you come and print like some school T-shirts right here on the spot. And, you know I just I, I just it came to mind once I seen your jacket, but yeah like I don't I, that's like the first time I ever been to the school, but it was cool. It was, it's, a, it's a beautiful school, man. different like I guess printing process for like each like because like with like black t-shirts um, uh, well, I, I use a uh, plastic soil, plastic soil. yeah okay. yeah and um, basically because like I know with, with whites depending on like the ink and how opaque it is you have to do like multiple passes to have like a more opaque print and, like instead of it kind of like fusing with like the the actual shirt yeah and like with like this one like it's like a different mesh but it's easier because it's on a white shirt how, how many, uh, this one's a 200 uh, yeah and this one's a uh, leave 155 or 160 but like I usually go with 125 but like all my screens that I had were like all used up and I had nothing but like I was still be able to work with the 160 though Yeah, like I, um, for a while I was working for like this company, but um, like you know work was like getting so like, they weren't getting much work, but I, like like not as much I got with like the manual press yeah. though. So, a little familiar with it, but not too much. Do you get shit done with the manual press? No, hell yeah, it's like it's more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all you need. People don't want the fucking. Yeah, exactly. But even then, you know, you got the CMYK process too. Yeah, yeah. Sure, man. Right. 
All right, man, we're here at Duke Visions. My name is Raul, and right here I'm about to give you a quick tutorial workshop and the silk screen process. And first, I'm gonna go along with um, letting you know the material. So right here we have two different types of silk screens. We have a 200 mesh silk screen right here, and then we have a 160 silk screen um, right here. And then we have your squeegees, and we'll go a lot more detail on like different specialty squeegees for different prints. And then we even have your inks right here. We have Union ink right here. And then um, that's pretty much it. So now, since we're along with the materials, so now I'm about to go through the process I go through to get my screens prepared. So right here, have, you know, easy, simple, you know, materials you get, you know, your local hardware store, 99 cent store. But one of my um, main things I'd like to do is tape off as much edges as possible just to avoid any ink that could, you know, pass through and get on your um, garment. So. You want me to cover that right now? Just because I was going to cover that, but a little bit like down. Just because I was going to do like the setup and then come along with it. But um, just like a quick low down though. So like the, the 160 screen that I have right here is mainly just to print on like white garments to where this 200 is um, to print on blacks. But depending on, you know, your creative process and how you want to do it, then you go, you know, mostly work with either one, but each screen has a specialty in regards to like the final outcome of a print. But here, just tape off edges, just so. And like another chemical that I brought with me, but it just take too long to dry. Like it's almost like emulsion, but it, like I use it to block off these, these corners just so um, or the, the edges just so it's like another safeguard and then just applying the tape just as like a secondary and then like another thing i also do and this is like more in guidelines to um, like setting up like the design like i put these uh crosshairs just so depending on your palette if you have like your middle alignment just so you can line up your print so it's not crooked or anything and you know you don't have to worry about it you know looking or chaffa when you know it's on the tee. Well, like um, on my um, silk screen press, I have like a middle line where it's like dead center of the palette. Yeah, and then you know the, these two crosshairs, you know, I use that to uh, align it. But um, also, yeah, re re registration. It's called registering the um, prints yeah. by um, each color mm -hmm. so you don't get them uh, mixed up or yeah. aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, if you're going into like multicolors, then this is when like the registration marks come in, like you know, key. Because if not, then it'll be like out of line, and the print won't look good. And you know, but yeah, that that's definitely also another key factor for it. And then I use this particular tape just because it's like the perfect measurement, one inch by one inch, and you know, that's just like a small little key, you know, thing that. You know, I do when I make my registration marks, make them one by one inch, just so this tape fits it. But does anybody have questions so far? Meanwhile, that I set this up, or what is the uh huh? So. The main thing you want to take into consideration is like the garments that you're printing on. So if you're printing from between small to extra large, you want to make a design that's going to either fit in line with all those or you're just going to create a screen that's smaller to, you know, compensate for the smaller um, t-shirts or a larger design for like the larger t-shirts. So if you're going like 2X, 3X. Um, so... So like the, the main window that you want to go with is like, you know, from nipple to nipple, you know, and that's like predominantly like nine, nine and a half inches. So usually that's like within the realm I try to stay in. But, you know, depending on like the individual and like the design, you know, it could occupy the full, you know, palette of this, like the whole front end of the shirt. So, you know, it depends. And also like if you want like a pocket print too, like that also depends on um, like the placement you want it on the screen as well. So we have this one taped off. 
So we're gonna start off first with the black ink. So now that we're ready at the process to print, I'm gonna um, go more in detail and um, like the actual like printing techniques. So there's a, a pull technique and a, a push technique where you somewhat get different outcomes, but like if you're gonna be doing a large run, you wanna keep like that same technique as consistent as possible. But right now I'm about to apply my ink. And the ink I'm working right now with is um, Union ink. It's a plastic soil ink, oil-based, and which is why we have this flash dryer, which usually, you know, depending on certain uh, temperatures of like the ink, it requires it to be um, like heated to cure the ink. It usually varies on the actual ink itself, and that's usually in the description when like you buy it, like it'll say, but um, most of the time um, it's between like like 100 to like almost like 200 degrees. But, um, you know, like with like some machines, you kind of have like a dial on it that lets you know the temperatures that you're gonna be at. But um, some of them they don't, so it's kind of like, you kind of have to monitor the t-shirt and make sure it don't um, get burned or anything or make sure you have like enough heat to where it dries and doesn't leave it um, wet or anything and, you know, ruin the t-shirt. Um, you start seeing like smoke come from like, you know, like the palette and basically that's like an indicator that you, the ink has fully dried, but then also you're kind of going in a line where you're burning like the actual garment and stuff like that. But, um, so quick rundown. So the squeegee that I have right here, it's a 70 and basically like the, they have a color coded. So this one right here is a yellow one and this one is used for like, like both if you're printing on t-shirts and if you're printing on poster paper, where like the poster paper, um, you're gonna want um, 80 and it's a green um, like squeegee. And then if you're just doing just t-shirts, it's a like red orange and it's like a lot softer where like the 81 it's harder, but this one like is like in the middle. So it's like perfect, it's like, like multi-dimensional you could say, or multi-versatile. And then, Um, no, like, depending on, like, the run, you're gonna want to apply more, but, like, if you're just doing a couple, you just, you know, put a little bit and you add as you go, but, oh, yeah, so, um, so right here, we have a 160, and, um, the different types of meshes that have different, like, specifications, so, from, I believe 34 to, like, 80, that's mainly, like, if you're using inks, that's, like, glitter, or it has, um, like a metallic kind of a medium you could say and you know if it has like kind of a like a puff to like the final finish of the print but um with the 160 you usually want to use them on like uh you get more of a like medium finish to where like if right here at the 200 this allows a lot less ink to come through because the the openings are like a lot smaller so for example for like if you want to do a half tone print you'd want to be in the lines between 220 to almost 305 and then um, also same if you want to do cm1k which is uh, almost like the same like process as like a printer but you're just using cyan magenta yellow and black and um it, 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 there's like a lot more detail when it comes to printing that just because you had to mess with like the pixels and everything but that's more like computer work but like in regards to um like the physical material, you know, you want to usually get screens there between 225 to 305 for like half tones and more finer detail prints to where like 160, you could still use it as like a main print or like an under base print. And usually the main uh, screen that I mess with is a 125, which allows more ink to pass through. And it's, it's usually um, the main uh, like screen you want to use when you print on uh, white garments. But, um, Yeah, no, like usually they, they have them labeled at the store, but like a, a good like way to like indicate from when you're like in like the hundreds going into the two hundreds is that the two hundreds and three hundreds are yellow meshes. And then, you know, like the thirties to like one sixty are like white see-through meshes. But like, if you like, there's no number to give you a, like, a, I guess like a, like a guideline to what you're getting, then it'll be like hard to determine what's what. But um, 
now that we you know went through the screen and the emulsion oh and then also the inks too so the, another big factor is the ink so the more um permanent you want your your design to be you want to um pair in a plastisol ink just because it's a lot more durable and um which is the reason why you require the flash dryer to dry and cook and cure it to where if you have a water-based ink, you can still use them on garments, but they're likely to wash out more. And um, usually you want to use like water-based inks to like do like boxes, like um, posters and stuff like that. But like, if you're gonna be printing on like sweaters, hoodies and you know any like apparel medium you want to usually go with um, plastisol ink but then like if you're printing on nylon there's like a special additive that you want to add to it where it's called a catalyst and basically that uh, it, act, it activates the ink to where it it prints i'm um, not prints but um it cures a lot more faster but still keeps a permanent um permanent print because if you were to print like straight plastisol on a nylon uh, garment there's a chance that it'll like peel off when, when you like wash it out but um it's pretty much it so now we're about to go through like the actual process of printing and um a key uh, component you want is it's like an adhesive it's a fast track 384 and basically you, you, you spray it on your on your platform just so if when you're doing like multiple color prints or if you're doing like a multi-pass print you don't want your shirt to move pick up with the with the screen so you know depending on how you work you know you do a light pass oh yeah the, that, yeah yeah that's true there there's also like almost like kind of like a vinyl form of it where it's just like a whole sheet and you know that's definitely a lot of, a, a quicker way to um you know get it going and like usually like when i've experienced with that it was like with like the automatic churn press and like yeah. more like industrial type um, setup and like this is like more economical you could say yeah. but um so that's pretty much it they may have questions so far before i get into the actual printing side of it when you do color garments do you still use plastic soil? for for me i, I still use plastic soil Are you Uh, I've heard, but I, I never really explored it like on my own, like personal, like um, like using like the whole entire print process. But I've heard about it, but I haven't like done it myself. But um, yeah, that's so so that's the thing. So when you want to do a multicolor, you each screen is gonna be its own distinct color. So say if you're running like a four color um, design each color is going to be on its own screen but then again you could also you know i forgot the exact term of it but when you mix multiple colors and it kind of creates like that gradient look that's like ah, i honestly forgot the actual term for it but you know that, that just depends on like the style and aesthetic you want to go with the print like you know you can mix it all on one screen but you know be different so it just depends on the design and you know the approach to it but so, all right, so right now I'm about to print on a white t-shirt. And right here you can get more better visual of like the actual printing techniques and um, like what way works best for you. Personally for me, I prefer um, pushing, but there's also another pre-existing um, like process that you have to do before you actually print it, which is actually flooding it. And um, basically that just gives you a higher chance of uh, getting like the full ink through. Cause if you just do a, a pull, if you pull the print just off like that, you might avoid, um, or you might come across spots that, you know, don't didn't get ink and on the garment, it ain't gonna look right. But, and another also key factor when you're when you're printing a shirt, you want to have a four finger measurement from the collar down to the top of the, the design just so you don't have a design that's too high and too low. Well, like the, the shirts that I go with is all style. And for me, like I just like the material and um, it's like 100% cotton and um, I just pushed for me, like I've been working with it for many years and you know, a lot of people like it, but you know, depending on more personal preferences, you could print on, you know, Pro Club, 
with um, like American Apparel, you know, T-shirts, you know. So, so co compared to like this um, shirt, so All Style and Gildan, Gildan is a lot cheaper and you're most likely going to find it for like a dollar and like 50, maybe a dollar 80 cents each, you know, each shirt. But with, with these shirts, they go around like two dollars each and like the actual connect that I go through, they, he does for like white shirts, it's $22 for a dozen and then 24 bucks for a color, you know, that goes on. Now you go. Um, the ultimate factor for me is the final product. So if you have shirts where like the print comes out good and you know, everything's like aligned and you don't have no misalignments or misprints or, you know, little like manchas, like you could sell them up to like 15, 20 bucks. It just depends on, I guess, how you market yourself. But like a minimum, if you're, you know, just trying to start off, at least 10 bucks. And, you know, I feel the, the turnaround on like your investment, you eventually make it back. Cause you know, if you're just only gonna do a dozen and you sell them at 10 bucks, that's where you want 20, where your initial investment was just 22 bucks. So, yeah. But, um, so aside from that, so I just wanna make sure this is four fingers. So right now I'm about to go through the process of flooding in. Basically what you want to do is lift up the screen off of the, the palette just so you don't print on the shirt. And you want to make sure the full design is covered just so when you press it or pull it, you could say, um, you know you have a, a full print. So now, yeah, you, you pull for the flood, but you could also pull to print, but then again, like if you're gonna be pulling, you're gonna wanna print all your shirts pulling because if you like pull once and then you push the other way, then it might like like create like a smudge on the shirt. But um, once you like have one direction, you just wanna stay in that direction. So on this one, I'm just gonna push. And usually you wanna like have a pretty good firm press and then you know go for a second, pull just or a press, just so um, you get all the ink through. flash dryer and um, another uh, key factor when it comes to investing in a flash dryer a thing I noticed on this one it's a it's a coil flash dryer which is you know perfectly cool when like you're first starting out but um, what you call it uh, it doesn't give you an equal amount of heat to the garment so that also is like a key factor when it comes to vesting to, to compare it to like an infrared uh, flash dryer which it equally applies depending on like the size of it equally applies same heat and all that and like you don't have to worry about one area not being um like fully cured compared to like you know this one where you know if depending on how big the design is you might get a part in the corner of the design that might not get fully cured so, what are the price differences? so these ones like usually Cause me, I mainly like look off of like offer up and Craigslist just to get a quick deal. Just cause like if you really look at the equipment, it gets really expensive. So like for even one of these, like straight like brand new would probably run you around like two, three hundred plus. To where like if you want like an infrared um, flash dryer, that's like almost five, six hundred plus. But it's because you get a better outcome on your product and you you most likely have a better chance of. Um, it curing around the first try and like you don't have to worry about you know if this part got fully cured or not what's but the, uh, what's the cheapest method to get that cure and dry the plus solids? well like i first started off if like if you don't got the money to invest in a flash dryer is a heat gun and like i went to harbor Frey and it's like 10 12 bucks for a heat gun and basically with that you just you know keep on going back and forth on it and um 
you know, and then you just kind of like plug and play and choose, you know, if it's dry or not. But eventually, once you get enough money, you eventually want to invest on one of these and, um, you know. But just wanted to point out on this one, since it's a higher uh, mesh, the ink didn't go fully through. So I'm going to give it another pass because like, if you could look a little bit right there, it kind of looks like a bit cloudy. And that, and the good thing when you have a, 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 a multicolor silk screen is that usually most of the time you have these micro registrations and then you have this other registration that keeps it pretty in line for you. But depending on, um, you know, what setup you have, you might not have those, you know, things, but definitely those are definitely uh, positive components to the actual press. So those are like, you know, important things to look into when you're like doing a full, full investment into a press. But, you know, as of right now, you know, this, this is a good press that, you know, can mainly do everything that you need before you actually upgrade. And now, like, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but now, like, you can see, like, it's like a full covered print and it's not gonna be um, cloudy. And uh, you just, you know, this, like, this ideal um, print that you'd want right here. And then also like with the timing, it just ultimately depends on how high you set um, or how high your um, flash dryer goes. So for me, you know, I always like plug and play and you know, between like 30 seconds to like 20 seconds, just so I don't burn it. But you know, sometimes you might have to go back and um, you might have to go back and touch it and feel it. And even though you might get a little bit of smoke, that's just an indicator that the ink has dried and it like, that's basically like the, it's like, I don't know the exact name of the chemical, but basically it's like, it got activated and it's fully dry. So now that we have our shirt, basically it right there. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! That looks good. Who made that logo? <laughs> I don't know who did. I did. Oh, uh, you did? Oh, uh, man. But now I'm gonna go um, over like the printing on, on a white, uh, I mean, printing white on black, which is like, it's still similar, but it just might take a little bit more time because you might have to do um, multiple passes, but so about a- you, I had a question. Uh -huh. you do only one color, you don't need any dry red off. You just need to, um, to flash it, right? But if it's color wise, you need a, a conveyor dryer, right? Yeah, or okay. well like, so, 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 now, like, if you're dealing with, like, multiple colors, depending on, like, how many, um, like, palettes you have could, like, allow you to, like, keep the same, like, I guess, placement of it and just rotate it and, like, have, like, one flash dryer, like, to just cure the ink and then once you bring the next color, it's, like, cool to dry and, and yeah. print on. But, um, for each color, you have to the, yeah, 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 you, for each color, exactly. You have to flash it to make sure that the ink before it doesn't get stuck to, like, the the next uh, screen and um, just to avoid for that to, you know, possibly mess up the screen as well. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But in the end goal, if you're doing multiple colors, you would want the conveyor belt. Yeah, so just so like the, like the final curing time for it is like more equal. Cause like, you know, when you flash it, it's not like the, like the full amount for it to cure, but just enough so you keep on printing. How much do you want to cost? The conveyors? Um, usually for like a top brand um, conveyor belt, you're looking at between like five to like almost like six G's. But, um, you know, sometimes if you just patient, look on Craigslist and offer up and stuff like that, like you can find it like super cheap. Like there's one dude that he was getting rid of his conveyor belt, he was expanding, he was getting rid of it for 250, and that's like a major come, but you know, that's like once in a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? Yeah. And then you gotta look at electricity. Yeah, yeah. the wattage and voltage and yeah, so that that that's definitely another um, key factor to keep in mind. And also like a, another thing you also want to um, keep in mind, and this is more like um, in like the design and like how you want it to appear on, on a white and a black. So for this particular design, I had to invert it just so, 
you kind of get the same like feel on, on this one. So right here, it's gonna be white, you know, on, on like a black t-shirt. I mean, on it's gonna be, this is gonna be the white t-shirt and you know, the, the black ink surrounding it. But when you um, print on a, on like a black t-shirt, you want to invert it just so you still imply like the same characteristics in that one. Because if you were to use that same design and just use white instead, it would just kind of be, um, it, it, it won't look the same. Like, I, I don't know the exact like term for it, but usually like when you're, you're using the same design and just want to use a, a white shirt and a black shirt, you want to invert the design just for each different one. But all right, this one set up. What uh, program do you use to uh, color um, separate? Um, I mainly work off of Illustrator, okay. but you can also do it off of uh, Photoshop as well. Okay. But my, my main um, program I, I mess with is uh, Illustrator. Okay. I use Illustrator Vector. What was Vector it? Work always comes out good in Illustrator. Yeah, like, so like, to, to like go down more on like on the techno side of it, yeah. when it comes to like the, the final outcome of a, of like the design, you're gonna have a more crisp edge because on Illustrator, the pixels, yeah, like the pixels are all like equal. Like you're not gonna have jagged edges. So like if you were to import an image into Photoshop, depending on how big your image and the resolution is set at, it's gonna also determine like how fine the image is gonna come out. So if you have a, a image that's like three inches by three inches and you're gonna blow it up to eight inches by eight inches, you're gonna get like a little bit of pixel distortion in like the design, which you know, you, you wanna keep an eye on when like, if you're going through someone who's like printing it for you and you know, that's just like key things that you wanna like pay attention to. Yeah, you, you 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 can, but that that just goes back into like the pixel issue. That's like the main thing. The pixels is what's gonna determine how um, clean and crisp the design is. So like ultimately, it's just having the right file size and everything sized up already. Because if you have to adjust sizes and stuff, that's when you know you kind of uh, run the risk of you know getting an image that's not gonna be as clean and as crisp as you wanted it to be. But all right, now we're gonna print on a black T-shirt. And this one's all style as well. And you know, an another key thing to be open-minded to too when like you're investing into like garments is like what feel you want. So like for, for me, when I've dealt with all style for so long, it shrinks, but not enough to where, you know, it kind of feels like you don't want to wear it again to where I know there's some brands that once you wash it once, like it's like super shrunk and um, you know, it's not as comfortable as you first wore it, you know, but that's just more like in the design to like the actual material that you want to print on, you know, but that just ultimately depends on you as like your brand or you if you just want to print shirts for yourself. And then another um, key thing also that I didn't go over when setting up the t-shirt is um, you want to make sure the t-shirt is equally proportional on each side, because if not, you might run the risk of um, printing like a shirt on um, too much to the right or too much to the left. And you know, you definitely want to keep in mind for that because you know, no one wants a, a print that looks, you know, chafa, you could say. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, exactly. Cause if not, then you know, you're gonna be losing money and you know, no one wants to lose money. Yeah. And then also another um, thing that I wanted to point out when it comes to your ink. So say for example, if you know, it's your first time getting a screen and you don't know what mesh to pick and you, you, you're you printing on um, on black t-shirts and you want a, a higher mesh, but you got a 200, an easy um, way to um, make your ink more, um, I guess more, oh, damn, I keep on forgetting the term, but basically make it more um, loose and uh, 
make it a lot more easier for the ink to pass through the mesh. Yeah, and um, it's like, you could buy a special additive that allows you to, you know, you mix it with the ink and you know, you don't have to worry about getting a brand new screen. Cause you know, like it basically somewhat like dilutes it, but it still keeps its property as like opaque wise and you know, like how long it takes to um, cure. But then once you add a catalyst, then that's when, you know, your timing might change when it comes to curing. Um, for, I forgot what it's called. Oh, man, I was trying to remember it too, just so I didn't forget when I'm actually doing the workshop. But, to be honest, I, f I forgot the name, but if, if I remember, I will definitely bring it back up in the actual demo. And also, another reason why I, I chose to do this print on um, this particular mesh is because Sometimes if you're um, printing multicolors, you want an under base print, which basically is like, basically like a blank paper. And then on top of that, you add the colors just so you don't have to worry about adding multiple colors on top of like that same color. So it's just like a more um, easier way to get like the ink to be more opaque when especially printing on a, a dark um, garment or any color garment in, uh, for that matter. But um, this one, I'm going to give it another pass also. And, you know, usually when you're printing, you know, it just depends on you and, like, your personal, I guess, um, um, like, outcome you want it to come out and, like, how many passes you want to have it go through. Like, you know, depending, you know, you go two passes, three passes. But, like, the more passes you go, like, the more, um, like, ink goes on top of, like, the shirt, which might cause it to be heavy and, you know, like not as like comfortable to wear. Like, you know, depending if in the video you can see it, but now you got like more of an opaque print. And um, you, you can always print, you know, right off the bat with like a 110 and 125, but, um, you know that, oh shit, move the camera. But, um, you know, usually when you're doing like, um, like under base um, prints, like specifically just for under base, you want to stick with like a 200, 205. But um, that's more like if you, that's more if you're getting more fine tuned with like the actual uh, uh, craft itself. And even though you see smoke right now, it's like, it's not burning. Like another way you can also tell, like, especially on a black shirt, if like the ink itself looks burnt too. But now we got our... You said the cure heat time was about like 30 seconds. Yeah, but that, but that also depends like on your um, flash dryer. If you have one that kind of gives you like a time, then you, you know, kind of uh, calculate it more precisely to where, you know, this one it don't really have, but you could plug and play, you know, and that's usually where, you know, I've, um, you know, timed all my stuff at, usually like 20, 30 seconds. And also that also kind of goes in line to like, what you're also printing on. So like if you're printing on like potions and stuff, that's when you use like um, water-based ink and you just let that, let that dry with air to where like, you don't really want to print anything aside from clothes with um, plastisol ink, but I've done posters with plastisol ink and you know, they, they come out fine. They might peel off later on, you know, but that's just more of just, you know, creating prints and giving them out for free. And I've also tried it on like skateboards too. And you know, it was more as like of an art um, project instead of like an actual skateboard for its traditional use, but it still stayed on there. And um, I know like nowadays, like the skateboards are, um, they, they use kind of a plastisol ink, but it's like on a like a like a transparency paper, and like it's applied through heat. Yeah, 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 and like, but it's like totally different from this. Where like back in the days, they would be going through this same process, but you know, different equipment. But um, I don't know if um, anybody would be interested to try to print a shirt themselves and try it out. I brought multiple shirts to if you guys want to try it out yourselves or. Uh, what, what, is there a particular size? Cause I printed smalls right now. I don't know if you want.
Yeah. Yeah, I got X on now. And black. Black. And you want to set up or you want me to set up for you real quick? And as of right now, does anybody have like questions or? Yeah. Like a black, a black. Uh huh. be honest I, I never um like done it that like in that sense like if i was going to print on a black i'll usually print like white on top of it and then you know add colors to that but i never um personally tried like printing black on what, black and what then would be your opinion on it like in the process would be the same um if you were to apply a black ink on a black garment oh oh shit my bad my bad if um if you were to print a uh, black ink on a black garment and then try to apply colors on top of that you're still going to come across that same issue of um like the ink not being as opaque and then you're going to have to apply more ink on top of that which will ultimately um you will come across where it's called like over flooding where the ink will start um basically like spilling out of where your image is at and usually you want to just minimize as much passes as you want so if you're gonna go on a black um, garment you want to do a white underbase and then apply the colors and instead of like the black on black yeah yeah so like that that yeah so that that goes like somewhat in line into um like printing posters and that that would basically um, ultimately factor in like the ink you use. So you'd want to mainly use um, water-based, just because it's a lot more easier to work with when it comes to printing posters. But with water-based ink, you gotta also make sure you keep on washing on your screen because if you um, let the ink dry, your, your your screen is ruined. Like it's like completely shot. But compared to oil-based ink, it takes forever to dry, and like there's um, special chemicals that um, you use to um, basically. Uh, loosen it up so like what i used to clean is called mineral spirit and um there's like another like uh, can form of it which is mainly just to like get like really like long like say for, for example if you have really old inks i mean really old um um frames i mean screens and you have ink been chilling there for a minute you want to use this special spray i think it's, it's almost the the same company the 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 spray way but it's a i think it's like 485 but it's it's a yellow it's an orange can but i ran out of it so uh, I, I couldn't bring it so the main difference is just the, the heat right so yeah you want to use for posters you want to use water base yeah correct clothing right. yeah you want okay. yeah just so even though you use water base on um clothing but you run the risk once you wash it it might wash out the image where plastic soles are more permanent um yeah. you get permanent graphic Yeah. And then like the more you, you, you mess around with like the actual medium of printing, like the more um, like shortcuts you learn and you know, little techniques. Cause before um, I would just put tapes on the side, but now I apply this quick dry emulsion, which you know is a, it's, it's a lot more efficient when it comes to like, you know, printing like in a large amount, and you know you don't have to worry about ink passing through. So, and when you try to do different prints on a screen, so let's say you want to do this print, but you also want to do a pocket print. Uh huh. You could can you apply two different prints on a screen? Yeah. All right. So going towards like you know the finalization of like a design going onto the the screen 
depending if you how you work, you could you know apply you know your main back print on one screen and your pocket print on the other one, just as a more of a production time you know conserver. But if you know if you have the time you want and everything, you just um, basically flip like the pocket print upside down and, and expose it right here and you know you just had to switch your your shirts over and uh, yeah. i mean the the screen over but and like register it and all yeah. yeah and like the thing that I'll, I'll do is just get like this print done first then like mask it off with like a piece of paper then flip it yeah. over and just worry about just like yeah. the pocket print that saves you money on uh buying another screen yeah exactly 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 when I worked at a couple of print shops, they'll do is they'll do a pocket print image on one, uh -huh. and then they'll do the inside tag on one mm -hmm. on the same screen, and then they'll do a full, uh, the image on one screen. Mm, yeah. So when it comes to registration, you, you don't have to go and buy another screen. Yeah, exactly. Things. Yeah, because you know when you like start investing in the screens, they get pricey, and you know for this particular size, I believe it's like seven, no, twenty-four by like twenty inches. But that's and not including the mesh, though, right? That's just with the frame. No, that that, that it would be including the, the mesh. mesh. Yeah, with the mesh. So this is like the whole like, but without a graphic, mm -hmm. you're running, you're looking at like twenty, twenty two bucks for like this particular size screen. But you go with like larger, like thirty by like twenty four inches. But Those then are like jumbo, yeah, jumbo prints, right? yeah, and that's like, like a full, like, yeah, like a full print. like shirt print and. um you know, those run more like up to like 25, maybe 30 bucks. Yeah. But each spot, you know, is gonna have its different pricing because there's like so much competition in the game of silk screening, not only for printing, but also for like equipment supply wise that yeah. like, you know, like I mainly go to LA cause that's where they have like more um, options, but also they have better um, product too. Yeah. And also like another um, uh, thing too, like if you're first starting up, like an easy way to like make your own single portable station is um, if you go to, uh, uh, I think it's Dick Blick or Aaron Brothers. And um, basically they offer these clamps where you, all you gotta do is mount them to some type of board. And, um, and they, these clamps run like 30 bucks like no more than 40 bucks and basically you just mount it to a board and you just mount your screen and you got like a, you know a quick portable one you know but like if you like want to invest into it more and um you know get, get like production to where you know you have good quality um prints you know you're gonna invest in the better equipment but you know if you're just doing like a quick diy at your crib and you know just like kind of um testing out the game of silk screen, you know, that's like the most economical way you could go with to like start your own printing up process. Did you have to start your production right now. <laughs> Does anybody have any particular questions throughout like the whole process that maybe I didn't fully cover or maybe you guys had more questions? So say if a design has uh, more than one color on it, do you have to make like a, a separate, a separate uh, screen? Yeah, yeah. Separate, like, yeah. Like technically, depending on the design, you could um, put two colors on one, but that just depends on the, the size of the image, you know, just more as like an economic saver, you could say. I can I can see that um, you have to do multiple because of the spacing and stuff. Yeah. And the ink, because uh, you might you might want to bring a little bit over here because I know you didn't fully dry this spot. Yeah. But sometimes like like uh, like smoke could be good, but just don't let it overpass. Cause yeah. basically like it's kind of like releasing the chemicals inside the plastisol ink, which is like an indicator like all right now I'm dry, you know, remove me. Yeah. <laughs> Once you see it fucking flare up. And yeah. That's it. Yeah, and 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 another thing that I also um, do to um, make sure that it's um, dry, um, I I touch the print and like if it kind of like pulls with like your finger then like it's still somewhat wet but like if it don't pull like see for example like right here yeah 
and um, you know like this like the more like it touching your hand you get like a better feel for it to just know that's fully cured so once you know it's touching your hand and the, not on there you yeah Does anybody else want to print? I still... Yeah, that's... Um, do you want to print on a black or white? Uh, a white? White? Black? All right. And then I printed I print the small, so it's medium fine? All right, cool. But, like, at the end of this tutorial, I just want to let people know that, you know, you don't have to, I guess, initially invest in, like, heavy equipment because, you know, like, if you invest in a lot of equipment and you know this isn't what you want to do, you know, that's a major L. And um, there's, like, a lot more DIY um, outlets that you go with and, you know, just to save money and, you know, just to get the field if you even want to pursue this field. And also another thing, like I'm pretty sure you can't see it in the video, but also like on shirts when they come, they have like a like a seam right in the middle of it, which kind of gives you like a also like an eye to adjust it. So if you kind of see the line going over here, like and even though you kind of have your key points right here of like how to align, um, you want to also take this into consideration to you know help you align it. So, because I feel like my fingers are smaller than yours, so mm -hmm. you would put like a five finger for me, or you you would still do four. Um. Damn, that's a that's a good question. Um, I I would honestly still go with four just from like my experiences and all. Like that's just like a good um like measurement for it. But um, yeah, that's to be honest, that's kind of hard to tell. Like um, but just eye it out. yeah, you, you eye it out. So there right, so you go. Put the ink on, you yeah. Or if you want, I, I go like um, flood in, and then you can just press it if you like. No, I want to do the whole thing. The whole thing, all right, for sure. <laughs> okay, so the ink? Yeah, there's already no. ink on there. Yeah, there's there's already enough ink on there. Yeah. Just a little bit more, just so you get that top part. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, but like more like an like angle it towards your way, and then yeah, push it. And you wanna push down pretty hard and firm, just so you get like the ink fully through. So that, that, that's another thing. So that ultimately factors in with like the ink itself. So if you have like a lot, or you have an ink that's a lot more looser, you're gonna wanna press it fast because if you do it too slow, it kind of runs the risk of it bleeding out to where like um, thicker inks, you kind of wanna do like a steady print, but like keep the pressure consistent to keep like the print, the final print. Yeah, you can lift it up. Well, you have to dry it first. Yeah, so like, you know, this would be considered like the underbase if you're doing like a multicolor. But like, say like, you know, depending on um, 
how you want the design to look, you might be happy with that, but some people, they would like, like it more opaque. Yeah, like 25, 30 seconds, depending. But like also like if say if you lose track of like time, and if you if you see like a little bit of smoke starting to come up like right now, yeah, then that's when, yeah. And you know, that, that's like an indicator too. Yeah. And you wanna be careful right here because you wanna get ink right here, like right here on your, on your jacket. Because you kind of got some already on your jacket. Yeah, hey, like that, that's definitely another thing, you know, you're gonna dirty a lot of clothes throughout this process. And an, another thing I also want to point out too, um, even though I forgot to bring like a, a test run shirt, usually what you wanna do is have like a, a test run shirt that is not like that, like the final shirt you wanna print on, just so like, like old shirt basically. yeah, just so you, you know, you get all the ink through and you know, it's kinda like the, the, the pre-print before, you know, you actually go on the live um, shirt that you're gonna wanna print on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to angle it more toward you, yeah. And like, see, like, if you pause in it, you want to go back and just like go one more time, because if it, it, like, if you take it off, you'll see like a line within like the shirt. But like, yeah, but if you do like another print, it'll take it right away. All right, no, that's, that's good, that's good. If you want, you, you can use this to like clean your hands. And like, it, this is mineral spray. This is what basically cleans off the ink. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, another tool that you could invest in is it's called the goof gun. And basically what it is, so say for example, if um, you know, you get ink like on your jacket or like on your shirt, this goof gun, it, it takes like acetone and basically allows you to wash out the design. But like if you're printing on white, then and you get like a like a, a smudge right here, then, then you know it's done. But like it's more used on um, black t-shirts and stuff like that, black garments. Nice. I'll, I'll do another. Try it out, man. And um, what size would you want? Have medium, large, medium. extra large. Right. Large. Large. Let me see. What, what is this? Medium. Yeah. And like they, they they shrink down a little bit, but. Do you want to give a shout out first? Or? <laughs> medium. Medium. It's good. All right. Hey, yeah, give us a shout out, bro. Shout. Yeah. <laughs> and after we finish printing, uh, I'll give you a lowdown of like my my um, cleaning process I do when it comes to like cleaning the screens and all that. Um, you want to probably bring it a little bit more back. Um, so, so. We print uh, another white, so I have a question. I don't want to... You see this print? Mm -hmm. The tint is crack. Oh, I yeah. see. So I want to... Um, made again? Oh, okay. Made again, but I don't... What do you recommend that this not happen more? Oh, so for, for this one, this is, um, I didn't press it down hard enough to um, yeah. get the ink fully in there. Yeah. But like if it cracks, that means that um, the you apply too much heat and it basically, you know, um, weakens the ink instead of um, like, you know, making it more durable. 
but that that right there is just for not like applying too much pressure and um, laying the ego through but if anything i'm gonna probably add some of that additive just to make it uh, more loose and just so the ink could pass through more easier The additive, um, fancy into my book just so I get the name of it. But yeah, thank you. It's called oh, a pigment um, reducer. Oh. <laughs> so, this is pigment reducer, and basically, this allows you to make your 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 ink more um, looser and allows it the ink to pass through the the mesh when it's like a high mesh um, count because some inks they come runny and some ink comes like more pasty and thicker which ultimately in lines for it being like opaque and you know having like a thicker finish That's another thing, you know, you gotta be careful with the ink because if you like, you know, kind of pull it too quick, it might drag and. I'm gonna mix the ink underneath the. Uh, to, to make the um, ink more liquidier. And basically allows it to run through higher uh, mesh counts. So like say for example if I brought like a 125 instead of this 160, I wouldn't have to worry about adding this, but since um you know like on that first print it, the, lower the, the, the lower the number the more um ink comes through. Oh, okay. To where the higher the number the more finer the, the print is gonna be, but then um less ink comes through. Once you have it fully mixed is when you stop seeing like that same like pigment white you could say and like you automatically also tell like once you mix it it's like way more um looser and you can play with it a lot more but all right now you're sitting ready to go and then right now you want to pre-flood it This is like a perfect example of like the pulling technique. Alright, so on this one, I did a poor job of taping it off and up here got ink right here. And, but I don't know why it ink should have been right here. Yeah. So when you do it, it's all the work that's going into the rubber part. Yeah. Yeah. So now we go apply the heat flash dryer on top of it. For a white, I'd consider it a loss because for that goof gun, you you wouldn't be able to um, wash it out on the white because it's gonna be like you'll be able to wash it out, but you're still gonna see like a mancha on there. But like if you if, if that were to happen on a black t-shirt or a colored t-shirt, it'll be easy to wash it out. So like 
you know, even though white t-shirts, you know, look cleaner, but there's like a higher risk of, you know, them, and you want to check it out. But then, uh, like another thing I, I noticed, um, you kind of did like a lot more passes than what you should have done. And it kind of like bled through right here. And also it kind of like, if you look at it right here, it's a lot more thicker, which, you know, you don't really want that, but you know, it, it just depends, you know, like if you want that particular texture, you want to um, leave it like that. But I'll, I'll put it again, cause it's still wet. stay within three inches width and you know that would like ultimately equivalent you know or like equalize to like the height of it but I usually stay within that but you know it ultimately depends on the graphic itself you know like you know I know certain brands have like you know like a, a, a circle you know and you know that might be your main thing and you know yeah. like the outcome will be different but yeah, but for me personally, I just I stick within like three inches, and like usually for like pocket prints, I stick between like three and a half to like four inches. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey man, it's it's all good, dude. <laughs> all good. Hey man, those, those those are the ones you you learn from, man. You know. Does anyone else want to try it out? But you know, if anything, I, I, I could finish printing them out and you know. So, for sure. Um, would you want me to like close out, finish printing these up, or you want me to finish cleaning it out? Or? Um, I'd say let's hold off on those. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright, alright for sure, so um, basically now, so I'm not going to clean them off yet, just because we're still going to print after this, but um, I, I didn't bring the actual container with me, but usually it, uh, the actual chemical is called mineral spirit, and if you go to any um, silk screen supply store and you tell them mineral spirit, they, they know what you want, and um, basically this is the chemical to um, clean off like plastic salt ink because it's an oil base and this basically helps clean up um, oils and um, I, for me personally I always play into like a, a spray bottle just because um, you know in the container it comes in you have to keep on dabbing and stuff where you know you spray it down and you know for me to break down the ink more I get a brush spray it down break it down and then um, to make it like a lot more cleaner basically like a, a squeeze just to bring down all the ink that's like, you know, all loosened up and just, you know, wipe it up with some rags. And then, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot more efficient way to clean in, a lot more, you know, um, more, you know, sufficient way of cleaning it. But basically, you know, then like this I got from, you know, the Dollar Tree and this from the Dollar Tree too. And, you know, like you, you easily get stuff for cheap, you know, and they play a, a vital um, role in like, you know, the whole entire process of, of printing. But um, aside from that, that, that's pretty much the whole lowdown, you know, just knowing what, what mesh you want, because, you know, that ultimately play a factor of like the design and um, how it comes out on the garments that you choose. And um, also experimenting with different inks because inks, you know, they don't always come really pasty and uh, like the way the white is. But the reason why the white is pasty is because um, it's a high opaque ink, which, you know, like if you're, you want to do a one, you know, print run, it's going to be a lot more opaque than certain um, white inks. And, you know, there, there's a variety of different inks. There's like Union ink and like some spots they even make like their own ink and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, predominantly like your squeegee, you know, I'd always stick with like the yellow one because you go in both, you know, printing posters and printing t-shirts, you know. But like, if you just want to print posters, I'll go with the, the green um, um, squeegee. And if you're just printing t-shirts, I'll go with the orange and red um, squeegee. But um, aside from that, 
that's pretty much it. And just knowing what other, um, you know, chemicals you could use to help you out like this to keep the garment, you know, stuck on here and when you're doing multiple um, presses and stuff like that. And, you know, another quick view of, you know, the ink, this is Union Ink. Hold it there for a second. Once, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I had it wrong. But yeah. But yeah. So, you know, and usually like for like a bucket of this ink, it's like around like 30 bucks, you know, and you could buy it in gallons also or in pints. But like definitely when you start um, getting into like actual print colors um, or different colors, they might get more pricier. You know, if you want like a, a Laker yellow, you know, it's going to be more expensive than like a regular yellow, you know. So that's like another um, key factor to um, pay attention to. But aside from that, you know, just, you know, when you're um, shopping around for stuff, you know, keep in mind, you know, like shop around at different um, stores. So like some stores that, you know, you could go to is McLogan's in Los Angeles, um, Ryotech in LA also, um, Silkscreen Depot, but that's just made if you just want your screens um, burnt and made. And then like more closer out here in the, where, I, where I'm from, which is IE, um, you have um, Dynamic Silkscreen Supply, which is in Ontario. And then you have Reliable Silkscreen Supply, which is in Riverside. So, you know, depending wherever you're at, if you're in LA, you know, go to McLogan's, like that's the number one spot. You know, you also get vinyl there if you want stickers. They have like a wide range of different art supplies there, but you know, when you come closer more to IE, you know, you, they just specify just strictly in silkscreen supplies. So, you know, you don't always have to travel to LA to get this stuff, so. How do you make your own screen? So, like, if you want to make your own screen, I haven't um, experimented with it yet, but I, I eventually plan on doing it, but. Burning the image. Oh, burning the image? All right, so basically, this blue um, stuff you call it, it's called emulsion. And basically, when you first want to work with it, you want to be in a dark room where, um, like, the light, like, there's, like, special, like, yellow light bulbs. Like, I know there's an exact terminology for it, but, like, if you go to a silk screen supply and ask for that special light bulb, like, they'll, they'll know what you're talking about because um, the emulsion is um, activated by UV light. And um, if, like, um, exposing too much light, it, like, messes with, like, the chemical balance of it. So um, you mainly want to work in a, in a dark area or in a, in a dark room. And um, there's this scooper where you basically put the emulsion in it. And um, you just, it's like almost like silk screen, but you're just like coating it. And you want to coat from like the outside and the inside. And you also want to make sure you like take as much um, emulsion like off. Don't have as much excess because that could like ultimately play a factor in like the exposure time. Because if you have a thicker emulsion, um, it might require more time for it to be exposed to where if it's like a thin um, um, coat, it's gonna, um, you know, it's, it's gonna take less time. So for example, for, for this one, I only did 25 seconds on each one and you know, they work perfectly fine. And um, you know, depending on like your process too, like you could coat them. And if you have a dark room, you have a fan, you could dry them and it takes like 45 minutes to where, you know, if, uh, if you just have like a room where you could leave them at, they take like a day to dry and you know, like for me, when I expose them, I have like a little, um, like it's like a water tank where I leave the um, screen in and it loosens up the emulsion that was blocked out by your transparency, which has the design on it. And um, yeah, then I go with the spray bottle and wash it right out. But you know, like depending on your whole setup, you know, you might use a pressure washer and to like wash out the, the design and all that. I mean, yeah, to wash out the design, but then you might run the risk of like washing out the image if it's too much pressure. But then, um, what are some of the costs included in Say that again. What are some of the costs included? Like, what can I expect to pay to make like a two color design for a shirt for all two screens? How much would it cost me to do the burn myself? Oh, well, when it comes to burning your own stuff, there's like, I, I call like Mickey Mouse way of ex like exposing it, but then that, um, it ultimately depends on like the light you use. So there's um, special lights that you want. So that the ones I have on my machine, my exposure unit is um, they're they're like black light fluorescent lights, like something like that. 
Yeah, like I, I forgot, forgot the exact term. I should have been more prepared in case that question came up. But um, basically, like, it, but like, say for example, if you get like your normal hardware light, you know, like you had to plug and play on like the like the exposure time, you know. But that's more like on an economic um, like form of creating your own um, screens. But like, say for example, if you go to a spot for them to burn it for you and you're gonna get two screens, you're looking at almost like $40 each screen, so like an $80 investment just for the screens alone. But like, if you're really invested into the actual um, craft, you know, I'd say it's best to, you know, either make your own exposure unit, which I did, or invest in the one, but like that goes back in line to like the equipment being almost like, like 4,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks for an exposure unit. But with that, you know, you only do you also do your own work, but you also do work for other people too. So you know, it eventually pay for itself. But the initial investment is expensive. How much did you kind of spend? For mine, in total, I think I spent like 150, 200 bucks, and like it, it works fine. Just the only thing with um, like your traditional exposure units, you have this um, front cover mesh that basically, um, when like you turn on a vacuum, it it like sucks down like the um, mesh on top of the screen to make the the screen and the um, transparency as like flush as possible because if not you kind of get like a overburn and it, it gets cloudy and it doesn't get like the full image burnt out and uh, with me like I just stack books on top of my transparency and that works good for me you know but like your additional way you get like exposure unit that has that vacuum cover and you know like that that's like the more like yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, light. Yeah, yeah. So you made a full exposure setup that cost retail like thousands of dollars. You made it for under two hundred dollars. Yeah, and like the like, and like the the main thing is just having like the the lighting. Like that's like the main investment. I forgot the website, but like the light like the lighting units that I had basically took two fluorescent lights, but like three units, so a total of six lights. That was like. Like 70, like that was like if anything, like the most I spent, like like the most money on. Where like I just went to Home Depot, got like two um, pa like uh, pallets of uh, or panels of wood, and that's why I created like the box and you know 30 bucks for like the glass and it's about it. And then like miscellaneous hardware for like switches and tires and stuff like that. But can, yeah. If you have a screen made, can you take that design off and make another one? Yeah. So that that also that, that's another thing. So. Say for example, you did your run of prints for this design and you want to run another one. There's this chemical, it's called um, ER35 or ER30, um, or ER80, and it's um, emulsion remover. And basically, you want to make sure your, your screen is fully, you know, it has the ink fully removed, and um, then you apply the emulsion remover and then um, basically you let it sit and with the pressure washer or you know any way to wash it out you just wash it wash out the the um, emulsion and if you still have an image of a, of like an ink image on your shirt there's this other i mean shirt my bad on the screen um there's other chemicals called haze remover and basically um it's like a it's almost like acid so you but if you're working with a uh, haze remover you want to wear gloves and um just because it would like literally like burn your skin and basically it um, burns out the like ghost print you could say that's what they call it and you know you just wash that out and you got like a whole brand new screen and you just let it dry and recoat it and you know eventually in due time it's gonna wear out but you know you go always um if you have like the equipment to like stretch the mesh onto the screen you go always recoat them with like a new mesh on there too so you know, it just like once you have all the equipment and everything, like you can mostly like self sustain yourself and just only pick up on equipment or supplies that you need just so you can do everything yourself so instead of going through like another outlet, which is always expensive, which led to me to like do everything on my own as much as possible just because, you know, in this game, dude. Yeah, and you know, but you know, those are like things you learn along the way, and um, you know, those are very vital, you know. Um, that's very vital information because you know when I first started off, not nobody like told me a particular way to do it. And if anything, my brother, but he just introduced it to me. But you know, if you if you're coming across any problems or anything, usually YouTube is like a helpful you know outlet. If you know if you don't have no one directly that could let you know like how to trouble through it, through a certain situation. But that's pretty much it. You know what I'm
So like the the like I haven't uh, dealt with like a place online to get my screens um, made. If anything, like if you want a SAMA file, but usually um, all the spots when I would get my screen made, um, like you just take them a file on the USB, and then from there you just um, pick out like the mesh you want, and then you know they just like do it right there on the spot for you, depending on. Yeah, so like the the files you'd want preferably is either a PDF, Photoshop, or um, an Illustrator file, cause so you know. Like yeah, yeah, because. So you don't have like a spot online that they use to like email. You're just like, oh, I'll just email this out. I'll get like a couple of screens. You just have a spot that you go to. Yeah, like that that falls more in line if like you're just gonna go through an outlet that's gonna print all your shirts and you just send them the design, they're yeah. just gonna send you the shirts. But if like you're just gonna get your screens made, you like, um, you mostly have to go to like the actual like storefront to, you know, um, get everything and all that and like some you know some spots you get it done on the spot some people take a couple of days some people take a couple of weeks so that's when you have to like shop around and you know pick spots that you know are going to be reliable you know but so you look for spots like what do you think do you just is there stuff you should do like screens for screen printing well, like the the main thing I looked up was just a silk silk screen supplies, and oh. then from there, um, you know that opens up a wide range of you know like silk screening related businesses, and then you know you get your more specified like um, Screen Depot, which just strictly deals with burning screens, where like Lo McLogan's and um, Dynamic they just deal with supplies, but like this spot in Riverside called Reliable, they deal with supplies and they expose screens for you and all that. So like each store has like their different um, features, you could say. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's pretty much it. Oh, and then my bad. One more thing. Also, um, when it comes to you exposing your own film and um, or like printing on your own film, um, depending if you have a inkjet printer or a or a laser print um, printer, it's gonna depend on the film. So for me, I have an inkjet printer and I have to get film that is able to print on inkjet. So like, that's just another um, key, you know, um, detail to know if you're gonna be, you know, getting your own film and, you know, printing on them. Because if you print inkjet on a laser print, it's not gonna come out. If you use laser print on inkjet, it's just gonna like run off the, the transparency paper. So just wanted to. Nah, it's just it's just mainly um, what you, you you have working with, you know. So like if you like look for, like fortunate enough to start with the laser print because they say that's more you know um, better and you get like a better um, like thick coat of like the print, you know. Then but that's just runs more expensive. But um, you know inkjet works fine for me too. But it's just it all ends up falling down on preference and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, you know, I just wanted to give a special thank you for um, Duke Visions for allowing me to come here and, you know, share some knowledge and, you know, hopefully get a lot more people interested in somewhat like a lost star. You know, a lot of people want to go through another source, which is really expensive, but, you know, if you really want to invest the time into it, you know, you can do it yourself. But, you know, if you're interested, to follow up on me. I have an Instagram at primetimeclothing underscore CEO. And um, right now my website is under construction, but if you know, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And um, if you want to email me, it's primetimeclothing at uh, yahoo.com. And that's pretty much it. And just want to thank everybody who is here and, you know, involved with the demo. And, you know, you know, I definitely appreciate everybody, you know, the attention and, you know, the question you guys asked. And, you know, hope, you know, that you guys, you know, primetimeclothing underscore CEO. Cool, man. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.